Shout out to everybody. You already know it's your girl, Moochie. Straight out to 845 online radio. First and foremost, shout out to the hottest online radio station reporting live 845. Straight 845 radio building our own from the ground up. First and foremost, happy Monday to everybody. I hope everybody got up this morning and got some money. Not complain, but went and got some money. Now... Tonight's show, we're going to do a little bit differently. Now, usually when people come on the show, we try to get to know them, and we're going to, you know, you know, learn a little bit about them. But this particular guest, he's well-known. Um, he's going to tell you a little bit about himself and who he is, but we're going to name tonight's show Thoughts by Zoo, because Zoo has started this all 2018, and he has legitimately had some really, really good statements and opinions and things like that. So we want to get into them. So before we start, Zuba, talk to people. Tell them who you are and a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I own the Retreat Recording Club Studio with, uh, with my partner, Phil Consorti. Uh, we started that about five years ago, and we've been recording a lot of the talent in the 845, a lot of the top talent. Uh, one of our notable uh, clients that we had was Partisan Fontaine, who helped really pave the way for, you know, the the groundwork that we had for our studio. So, you know, now we're doing Tony E, Jig Nice, Banco Dupree, Dope Coley, you know, you just name a bunch of people. E's the rapper, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of people that are coming through the studio and just kind of utilizing our services now. It's been a good five years, man. And uh, not to mention, we just actually upgraded the studio. We just put a little bit of money back into it and, uh, Right now we got, I feel like we have the best aesthetic, aesthetically and sound wise, we have the top studio in the 845. No shots to anybody else. We got a lot of engineers out there doing their thing. <laughs> but I feel real, real confident, confident in what we just did. So we're gonna display it soon on, on, on the gram and everything, you know, so everybody will get to see what I'm talking about. But First and foremost, year, man. I'm it's about to say, 2018. It's let me, let's 2018. run it back for a minute, because yeah. now, for, let's run it back. You guys been in business for five years. Yeah. Um, you guys are an award winning. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. We got the first ever 845 yes. award for producer engineer of the year. Now, let's clear it up because um, shout out to Drozilla. He kind of broke down the difference. So, is Zubin, are you a producer or are you an engineer? Um, here's, I do both. Okay. And I can also produce through my engineer. Okay. Um, people got this concept of music producing because. Basically, if you make beats, you're being called a producer. Right. And people get that misconception that that is all that producing is. When you say you're a producer, that they think that you just make beats. Um, before that, Rick Rubin, Quincy Jones, a lot of people, they produce by basically bringing people together, uh, facilitating ideas, mm -hmm. basically being what a film director is to a film, they are to a song. Okay. And that's basically how I see myself. Okay. You know what I mean? I see myself as... as uh, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine mixed in one, in mixed one. together. Yes. So when an artist comes to you, they can expect to get the full service, produce a little bit of producing, a little bit of. We engineering. got a whole team now because of because of the success that we've had. Um, we brought a lot of people in and we've come together. We got a whole team of producers now that kind of work out of the house. Okay. Rich, Rich Morris comes through. Dizzy Banco comes through. T. Swift is making beats. He's producing now, getting it, getting busy with the beats. Mm -hmm, too. Getting mm -hmm. real busy with the beats. Loso, myself, and a few other guys even come through. Uh, KP, Justo, a lot of cats come through and, uh, and even share some of that love. Phil Major comes through. You know, even Drawzilla pops in every once in a while when, That's what's when, up. when he gets time. And you know what I'm saying? And it's just a vibe. That's basically what it is. It's just a creative environment. Nobody's in competition with each other over mm -hmm. here. It's just, yo, can we make a hot track together? Now, shout out to all about you because we always talk about you not you you know uniting in the Hudson eight four five and working together. Mm -hmm. You and Drawzilla have the top studio in the Hudson Valley. How do you guys come together and work together without stepping on each other's toes? Well, here's the thing: engineering is a lot different than let's say studios are businesses that generate income. Right. You know what I mean? We have he has his his clients. I have my clients. He has his, he's been doing this a long time, way longer than me, in terms of being in the industry, being doing all of this. So he's built his network. Right. And that's the key to this, is you have to build your own network. And that's the key to not stepping on anybody else's toes. You don't steal the other person's network. You build your own network. Now, will sometimes a client might leave you and go to him, or 
leave them and come to you? Absolutely, but you don't hate on that, and that's just business. Right, you, you know don't come to the cheat and talk about drumline, yeah, yeah. go to drumline, talk there's, about there's the a lot of, There's a lot of cats, you know, locally and stuff like that, they get salty and mm -hmm. they like to go on social media and, and run their mouths about what they're not getting and all that, and it's just, you gotta focus on what you're doing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, and just kind of just, if you will, have tunnel vision and not really worry about everybody else, and especially even locally, because once you start doing that, you put yourself in a mind state that's small. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said this before uh, online, like there's only 100,000 people in the entire 845 possibly. You right. know what I mean? Between all the communities, there's like 30,000 people in each community. And then of that, how many people listen to hip hop music? Exactly. You know what I mean? And then of that, how many people are gonna like your hip hop music? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a numbers game. There's always gonna be a fractional amount of people that are gonna fuck with Excuse me. That right. Mess with your music. <laughs> uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We thought we'd keep it real here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm being nice right now. You know, I, I, you see my, my, my posts. It's nothing but swear words. My mom gets tight. Mom, um, we're doing this for yeah, you. Yeah, she gets tight. She can send me the message in the DM. I don't see no more swear words online. You know? Mom, this interview is dedicated to you. So when we're done, I'm going to make sure, Mama Zoo, yeah. that you get this interview. Yeah, shout out to my parents, though. They've been highly supportive of everything that I've done. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people don't get that kind of support, you know, you know, coming from an Indian background too. Like my father's from India, my mother's black. You know, at most Indian kids, you know, you gotta go be a lawyer or a doctor right. or whatever. They kinda just let me do what I wanted to do. Now it's kinda cool. So Now, how was that growing up? You have a, a Indian father, a black mother, and then here you come um saying, I wanna be I wanna, you know, do music. How did your father and the culture accept it? Um, well, here's the thing. My dad was kind of separated from the whole culture, you know what I mean? Like, he came here when he was in his 20s, and, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of my family here already, so he okay. kind of integrated into Western civilization a lot easier and a lot more than, than your typical Indian immigrant that would come here. So okay. he was pretty, like, so when I was born and everything, he was... Already hip to it. You know what I mean? Like, he's, you know, he's American. You know what I mean? You talk to him, you know, I actually say he's more British than anything, but, but yeah, you know, he's got, he understands. He understands that he's yeah. down. Yeah, he put me in piano lessons when I was six years old. Oh, yeah, he knew. So. He knew, he knew he had a gift. Yeah. Now, Zoo, let's get into it because yeah. you have a lot to say, and I'm sure the people need to hear it because we're going into 2019. Now there's some things musically that we don't want to see yeah. going into 2019. <laughs> so let's start with artists. What are some things from artists that you don't want to see coming <laughs> into 2019 that they already starting now and you're like, wait, you got to do better. Um, the, the list is long and distinguished. <laughs> um, all right. Let's start with engineering first of all. Okay. Um, Look, I love that people want to build their own studios and offer services for $20 an hour, $30 mm -hmm. an hour, but like, what you're doing with somebody's craft is you have to be able to deliver a certain level of service. Okay. So, I've always felt that engineering should be a licensed profession because it's like, you know, you go to the hair salon, those people are licensed to cut your hair. You That's know right. What I mean, like, I feel like... the that the engineering industry should be something similar to that because you got a lot of cats who really just taught themselves. They don't really know exactly what they're doing. They just kind of just do what they do mm -hmm. and hey, it's good enough. You know what I mean? Like that sounds right. You know what I mean? But it can sound 20 times better and they just don't realize it because they never heard it. You know what I mean? And artists just kind of need to just kind of buckle down and just realize, listen, this is my craft. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very, very important to me. I understand that good recording costs money. Mm -hmm. Just spending the time in the session, like two hour sessions, you know what I mean? Like you can only get so much done. Right. You know, you gotta sit down and actually budget and, and, and set the money aside and make sure that you're blocking out enough studio time so you're not rushing. You give yourself enough time creatively to put together your song and for it to sound proper. And not only that, but to give the engineer enough time to also mix the song. Like, a lot of cats come in, they'll spend an hour and a half recording or a whole hour and 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying, tracking their song, and then we get left with 45 minutes to, to mix it down. Now, some cats might say, well, that's enough time. But, you know, you want to do your due diligence. Now, you know? professionally, how long should an engineer, and this is what artists should look for, how long should an engineer really spend on a track? Um, that's a tricky question, man. It all depends on the record and what you're doing. Like a lot of times, like sessions today, 
you got songs and everything that are done to these stereo MP3 bounces off of YouTube. Right. Which is not very high quality to begin with. The producers don't really know how to engineer their own beats. So right. they don't really sound right. So if you get a track like that, you can take an hour to an hour and 15, maybe two hours, depending on how long it takes you to do a lot of the tedious editing and stuff like that to mix a song down. Now, if you get the stem files, which is basically the beat files, every instrument, every sound that's in the beat has been individualized into audio files for you to be able to control. Mm -hmm. And if you get that, then that can take anywhere from two hours to four hours, depending on how well those songs have been so it's safe to say like a minimum should be an hour minimum. An hour minimum for mixing, yeah. Mix, okay. Yeah, an hour minimum for mixing. So people could say, yeah, oh, then a two hours is, is enough time if you can track your thing in an hour. But, you know, sometimes people are rushing through it. You know, you want to give yourself time to get in your vibe. You like to smoke. You like to drink. Right, right, right. You, right. you like to chill. Mean, right. You know, not only that, but, yo, know, be on time. Like be on time. Well, let's talk about that. that because you have a studio. This is what this is what artists do. You tell them a time and you say, hey, your session time is four o'clock, they leave their house at four. Mm. I don't understand it. It just routinely happens over and over and over again. It does not one artist is almost like a good ninety five percent of it. From the best to the worst. Yeah. They just all yeah, do it. Yeah, it's just you know what I mean? It, 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 Nobody's punctual, I and mean, when you see somebody who is punctual, it's refreshing. You know what I mean. And then sometimes you kind of get used to people being late, so you kind of give yourself a little bit more time doing whatever it is else that you're doing, and they show up on time. Like, oh crap, you're here. And yeah, you're here. Now you gotta, you know, what I'm saying stop whatever you're doing, playing Madden or whatever it is. That you're doing. <laughs> now listen, Zoo, you have worked with the best. First of all, congratulations to you because you were um, a very intricate part of Partisan Fontaine's success. Listen, I won't. Listen, no, no, no. I will say that we helped in some regard, but that man was going to make it no matter what. His relationships, the way that he, the, the playbook that he used, shout out to Dope Coley, shout out to Dan Cronin, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, these guys, the whole team that's behind Party and Party himself and his work ethic mm -hmm. is the reason why he is where he is. We, we had a relationship, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we were able to assist and help get the help you know what i'm saying and developing his sound into a professional sound but now, well, make no make no mistake about it he was at the retreat or he was not at the retreat that boy was gonna make it either way because there's nothing that changes talent you know that's what a I mean? fact like, now you know how did well, how do you feel though to know you see him it on feels amazing billboards. nah it's it's a surreal feeling because for me like i'm 33 years old so like i've been trying to you know what i'm saying help an artist and just be a part of this process and just even be anywhere remotely close to this mm -hmm. for the last 12, 13 years. So, like, for for that to happen and just to know, like, just be out somewhere and you see somebody just jamming out to Bodak Yellow and be like, yo, I know the nigga that wrote that, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. And it's just like, they're like, really? Like, yeah, like, oh, I thought she writes her... You gotta get in a whole conversation. Right, like, right. <laughs> but actually, to set the record straight, straight you know right. I mean, she don't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nothing but love, nothing but love. But, like, nah, he was going to make it regardless, man. And he just did all the right things. And he set a blueprint. Now, people need to follow that blueprint, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, on how to to establish establish yourself in a local area and make it out without moving. He didn't move. Right. He's, you know what I'm saying? He right. Was right here. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of cats left. They live in the city now, still Brett Newberg, shout out. But, like, he didn't leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, you know, shout out to him for just basically paving the way and just showing people really how to do it. And what's crazy is that pe he's shown people and people still ain't doing it. I'm about to say, like, because still ain't really doing I'm about to say, to be doing, man. we're going like, to get to the other top, the top dogs, because you work with, like you said, the best of the best. And we're going to run through. But yeah. let's talk about that, because like you said, he laid the blueprint. So let me ask you a question, Zoo, because yeah. I know when I'm laying in my bed and I see these stupid ass post, excuse my language, it just tickles me. Um, and then it tickles me even more because some of the artists that you've named don't yeah. be on that top 10 list. So when you see this, the top 10 and the 845, the top 20, or what, the top, you know, what do you feel? Ultimately what happens with that is, is that you get, it's a click bell. Mm -hmm. so which person's click can get people to post the most. Okay. So you don't really get an accurate telling as to what's really going on. What tells people who's the best artist is numbers. Mm -hmm. Numbers don't lie. Right now, Cats like Jignice, mm -hmm. Tony, mm -hmm. they drop a video mm -hmm. 
is getting over 20k. Jig Nice dropped a video. It's almost at a million. You know what I mean? Like without being paid. Without being like, oh, well, I don't know. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. You always got to put money into the marketing budget. Stop right there. Freeze. You always got to put money into the marketing. Is that budget. okay? Because a lot I've heard artists come up here and say. I don't respect artists that have paid views. It's not real It's not followers. paid views. It's not paid views. It's, it's advertising. Okay. Basically, like, let's say that you're on YouTube. You ever uh, finish a video on YouTube, and right before the video ends, it's got a whole bunch of joints that you can choose from to click on, mm -hmm. or one that might be even preview for you right. right there before the next video, right before the next playlist video, like, you know, the next uh, video in the playlist Come is ready on, to yep. go. That is what you're paying for. You're paying for that. Okay. That is advertising. No matter what you do, marketing, all that, that's advertising. And it's what you have to do. People who think that they're too good or they think that they then have fun not making any money and not selling your records while everybody else does. And you can sit there and be salty about why your stuff isn't moving, how you so nice at rapping, yada, 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 but nobody jives at your sound. And it's just like, yo, it's not about that. Right. It's not about that. Shaq West showed you. <laughs> it's not about who can rap. Right. Like, it's it's really not. It's about a sound. It's about how you can create an original sound for yourself that doesn't sound like anybody else's sound. And people get confused because you'll see these copycat artists make it that sound like other cats. Mm -hmm. And then they oh, but they didn't create their own sound. But they're not. I, they're not really analyzing that person really correctly in terms of the sound. Like there's intricate things that they're doing differently Different. okay. that people jive with, you know what I mean? And it, and it's just, you have to be able to identify that. Some people got the ear, some people don't. And it's just, some people got the voice. The and voice is a big don't. deal. Like, you know, like you can rap like all day. Quentin Miller clearly can rap good enough to sell Drake records and, and stuff, but how come nobody's listening to his music? By himself, right, right. Because it's a sound, you know what I mean? Like you have to have the voice, you know, and that's I feel like that's the most important thing. So you got so because you're because you're because you're a you're a recording artist. Your instrument is your voice. your voice. So you have to be a master at controlling that and utilizing that and manipulating it to do things that you never thought it could do. That's and a fact. Ad libs, you know what I mean? All that stuff. I think ad libs is like the main thing that I feel like artists have a problem with. I don't know what to do for my ad libs. Oh, well, you better go find a job because like, <laughs> it's right, like yo, right. this is like. Right. You can't have, you can't, like, there's, you either get this, you either get it, or you don't. That's you it. You know what I mean? Like, and you can develop, you can get it over time by trying, you know what I mean? Like, somebody who doesn't understand how to do Atlas can figure it out later, you know what I mean? But you have to figure that out. You can't say, yo, I don't know what to do. You have to figure it out. You have to listen to music and be like, oh, what are they doing? What makes their ad so special? You know what I mean? And it's just like. It, it who is Zeus' top five? If they had to say, who is Zeus' top five artists right now? Top five artists right now? It's so hard to say that because it's like a conflict of interest. Because you know what I mean? Like, I, I engineer people and people are going to get salty. Like, That's why a didn't you say, fact. Why didn't you say me or whatever? But everybody that knows me knows that I keep things 100. Mm -hmm. And, like, if I don't say you, it's because you got things to work on. And there's nothing wrong. That's constructive criticism. Absolutely. If you think that you got all the intangibles and you just read it, you just, people just haven't seen you yet, and that's the reason why you haven't blown it, you're an idiot. Like... This really like it's a lot more to this. So I'm not gonna give you in any particular order. I'll just give you the top five. Okay. All right. And it's in no particular order. All right. Tony E, Jig Nice, Banco Dupree. It gets good. It get, it gets hard here. It mm -hmm. gets hard. Cause there's a lot of good talented people like Foreign Dre's putting together good music. Woo. D Weathers puts together some solid music, yes. you know what I mean? Um, my man Keese in the 845, you know, I'm going to have to give Keese, Keese out of Beacon, my man Keese out of Beacon, I'll give him number four. Okay. He doesn't have a lot of stuff out, but... He's on his way. Yo, his... He just got a sound, man. There's just something different about him, man. Like, when he jumps on a record, it's just tenacity, man. And he just, he gets it, you know what I mean? And for somebody who just really just, you know hasn't really had their stuff out there like that and like other people have really been in this like Orange County 845 mm -hmm. circuit or whatever you know like he really doing it like I really give him some really really good talent and then um last but not least um 
Now, are you trying to tell me like top artists overall, or are you just trying to tell me like who's like them, like who's the, who's Zeus favorite? Like when you get in, yeah, like when you get in the studio and you know that they're coming, you're excited when you Honestly, drop something, you excited. Like, man, it's so hard to say. It's so hard to say. I could say Dope Coley. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, honestly, like, the growth of Dope Coley has been amazing. Isn't it? I'm watching him. Like, but now, you haven't even heard, like, the new Pink Heroin 2 that I'm executive producing that we're about to drop. Like, is that the what? I don't, I don't, no, no, no. He got, he's got a different intro for this. Oh, project. so he made me come to the studio. No, that was a different project. That oh. Was, that was Pink Heroin 1 or oh, something. Oh, yeah. my Lord. This, that was months ago that you came to the studio. Yes. Oh, so y'all already working on the next project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a different project. I don't, I don't, no, that's not the same. Wait a minute. Yeah. Let me, let me, le- let me leave some tea for the people. So, rumor has it that you got three projects you're working on right now. I got three projects. Yeah. Three projects. Yeah. That's the rumor. Now. Who's the three projects? Who, what, um, when? Life Lava. Um, mm. Life Lava is a highly talented. You know, you see, that's why I'm saying like I gotta have like a top ten because it's like five is just too little. There's too many talented people. Like Life Lava's talented. Yes, very much. You know so. what I'm saying? Like uh, Flossie's talented. Uh, so many people. Ease is talented. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got his own unique sound. There's a guy in Newburgh who I really want to record and finish his project. His name is Marky D. Yo, this guy, he's really talented too, man. And he's got some, he's got some stuff. Man. Any his females role. that you want to record? Uh, here's the thing about female artists around here. Um, I feel like a lot of them are like close, but they haven't really reached their pinnacle yet. They haven't okay. really identified their sound. I feel like what, what happens with female artists is that because the industry makes their lane small and it's on no blame to them it's just how they it's just how things are like mm-hmm. there's way more rap artists to listen to that are male than there are female rap artists to listen to and it's not like there's less females rapping well probably there are statistically but still talented females rapping i'm sure you can find a ton that are that are signable mm-hmm. that people would want to listen to right dolly star gets it in right c's gets it yes in. amber amber gets yes. it yes you know what i'm saying um you know, there's a there's a bunch of people that you know what I'm saying that really really do music and stuff. I you know I'm I can't always think off the top of my head off the all the artists and stuff that are doing it, but like there's a lot of artists that 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 are talented, and I just feel like it's hard to put them in categories sometimes because you just haven't had enough work to judge them on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean as well. Mm-hmm. But like I see what I see in the studio, so like from what I see in the studio, when I see somebody come in and like how quickly it takes them to do their what they do. Uh, some artists write on the spot. Like Tony E comes into the studio, he writes his song on the spot. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Like he'll record it and write it at the same time. You know what I mean? Jig Nice does the same thing. Party used to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Like to catch that, just things come to them like very, very quickly. Banco does it like that. Like the top cats, like it just kind of. And then some cats need to write. Prez Primo, he's another talented artist. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, working on his project too. He's he's got a project that's coming out. But Dope Coley, Pink Heroin too. Mm-hmm. Life Lava, Life Catches Up. Mm-hmm. Produ- I did actually every single beat on that and mixed the entire thing. Um, I got one beat on Dope Coley's thing, but I engineered and executive produced that rec- uh, that that whole album. Okay. And then uh, Tony E and Dizzy Banco got an album together. Or not even an album. I think like an EP. Um, that they've been working on for the past few months. That's fire. They performed one of the songs. Yes, they did at the, uh, at the Chance Theater. At the Chance Theater. And if you was not there, shout they out to Tony E. He turned it. And let me just say something. The people know him. I, let me let me just say this. The people. I always look at artists and I kind of judge them. Like you're on the music end. I'm just on like the fan base movie yeah. end. So when pe- artists get up there and perform um, a zoo, I look at the crowd. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When Tony got up there, you would have thought that he was Davies at one point. Then when he got in the crowd, they lost it. His his stage presence is crazy. And you would never think that. I've seen him perform all kinds of venues. I've seen him perform for uh, a a CEO boardroom filled with hotel executives. Killed it. You know what I'm saying? Killed it. You know what I mean? Like. And you look at him, you won't see that. Teenage, teenage, uh, sweet sixteen party out in Pennsylvania. Killed it. You know what I'm saying? Crowd surfing on the stage. That's, that's all. Just. Woo. Stable. You know what I'm saying? Crowd surfing off the stage like that. You know what I mean? And it's just certain cats get it, mm-hmm. and certain cats 
blame others and point fingers mm -hmm. and let uh, let other things get in your way. Right. If you knew the backstory of some of these artists that I work with, it would be like, all right, yo, you guys really need to buck up mm -hmm. because these people have gone through life. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And are still right here, positive attitude, giving it their all every single day. Tony has 140 songs recorded in the past eight months, nine months. You know what I'm saying? What is that, like eight or nine, ten albums? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and we're not using all of it, you know what I'm saying? We go through the process, you know what I'm saying, of listening to everything and making sure, like, you know what I'm saying, what are going to be the best songs that we're going to, you know what I'm saying, put on the project and everything like that. But, like, that's that's the kind of work it takes. And then people can make excuses. Oh, I don't have access to the studio like that. Like, Party didn't have access to the studio like that. He was recording everything out of his apartment. Like, you know what I'm saying? Out of, out, out of his bedroom. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, that whole not supposed to be here, that wasn't professionally recorded. You know what I'm saying? They did what they could. They mm -hmm. made do with the gear and the personnel that they had, and they got it done. And it did wonders for them. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So, like, it, at the end of the day, it's, it, you know what I mean? Just get it done. Just get it done. Just get it done, man. What else Just you don't want to see in 2019 that you're starting to see a lot of um, replica? Uh, and... They can lose the phrase no cap. I mean, I'd like to see that phrase go. <laughs> no away. cap? Yeah. I don't know where that even started or how it even got popular, but every single time I hear it, I just cringe. Just, you don't like that? I hate it. It's just for certain phrases just come out and it's just like, all right, man, you guys are reaching right now. Like, I don't, I don't, like. And I get it. I understand that, you know, some of them are actually quite intelligent, like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, because you'd be like, oh, that's what that word means? That's short for that word? How who told you? The dude's got the dictionary out. Now, let like, me, like, man, I, I got to ask this question, because when, we, when people look at you, they might think that you are part of the immigration process. Yeah. Um, so what is your stance right now, immigrant? Because I actually seen somebody put something. It kind of made me upset when they were like, you know, get Governor Cuomo out because he's pardoned, he decided to pardon some immigrants. And they were like, well, all immigrants are murderers, and why would he pardon them? Which is not true. So what's your stance on immigration well, and I things don't, like that? I don't stand by, I don't stand by ops, absolutes anyway. Anytime you hear somebody speaking in absolute, like, all this or all that, mm -hmm. you, you can just automatically throw out anything that they're about to say. Right. Um, just because nothing is ever 100% in, in, in life. So um, here's my stance on immigration. I, I actually get into a lot of... Trump debates on Facebook a yes, lot. Yes, you do. Um, I love stirring the pot a lot, so I'll just say things a lot of times just to get the conversation going. But it, it, I don't really believe that immigration is necessarily a problem. Um, it, just because uh, there's a lot of jobs that they do that people aren't going to do. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, but they've part of the problem with immigration is that Corporate America is, a, is basically created it by they want that cheap labor force. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like agriculture, whatever. You know what I mean? They're hiring uh, illegal immigrants. You got corporations that are right there willing to, to do that to cut to cut corners. So what's who's gonna hurt if you really were to like lose all illegal immigration? Who will hurt? You won't have the crops at the price that you want. You Absolutely. won't have the pizza at the price that you want. You won't have a lot of the restaurant meals at the price that you want. You know what I mean? You won't have landscaping, you know, at the price that you want. You won't have construction at the price that you want. Everything is going to inflate if you get rid of all illegal immigration. So the problem is that you have a whole system that's been built on something. And when you look at the actual cost and the problems that immigration is causing compared to, let's say, defense spending and, like, the war profiteering and, and the things and the problems that come with that, I feel like it's just a, it's just a pebble in the pond. If you were to take the budget, the national budget, and take all that defense spending money and basically put it to where you feel the immigration is creating gaps, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't really have an issue. And you can also create programs. I don't know. I'm pretty sure everybody that's an illegal immigrant on some level would like to be a citizen. Right, right. Absolutely. You know, maybe they're not a citizen because they can't speak English or the process is just... So long and... It's long and growing. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, some people can get it together. You don't know what... At the end of the day, you don't know what a person's life... Uh, situation is so they cast judgment on them because you think that you do know or you say this and this is like some shit that Kanye West did one time and he was just like oh if I was a slave I would have revolted and it's just like how can you even say that you don't know what you would have done in that situation 
You know what I mean? So like when I hear people talk like that, oh, well, if I was them, I would do this. I would go get a job. I go do like yo, shut up. Like, I come here legally. You like, know. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't know what you would have done if you were living in Guadalajara. You know what I'm saying? With no money, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? You would do what you needed to do to survive. Like, to survive. You know what I mean? So anything, uh, uh, legal immigrants. Those are some of the most like incredible people on the face of the earth because of what they had to go through and what they were willing to put themselves through just to have a shot at a better life. They know that they can get to the border and get sent right back home. Right. All that money that they spent on coyotes and stuff like that, they saved up all down the drain. You know what I'm saying? Coyotes? Like, that's what they call them. They call them coyotes. People that, that transport people. Oh, that's real. I thought yeah. you were talking about real coyotes. No, they, they oh, call them coyotes. Wow. That's, that's a term. That's a term. People that smuggle people across the border, they're called coyotes. Oh. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know I got a lot of useless, and I don't say useless information, but a lot of just random. Yeah, I would never do types. I thought you were talking about real coyotes. Nah, I watch a lot of television, man. Like, they be saying all this stuff in dialogue and stuff. I just pick up on it. Um, but yeah, coyotes is the term. All right, yeah. shut up. <laughs> this is why we have to have thoughts by Zoo. This is like thoughts by Zoo and reality. Now, Zoo, yeah. you're a engineer, producer, a yeah. uh, and artist development, everything. Going, Being in the industry, obviously we got to touch on the R. Kelly. Yeah. Uh, what is your stance? And actually, what is your stance on artists in the music industry anyway? Because not for nothing, any artist can be bamboozled by a young woman. But what is your stance on this actual R. Kelly story and men in the music industry? Um, I don't think a lot of people really give credit to mental health problems in this country. Um, R. Kelly clearly has mental health issues. Right. Um, and it's weird because you can sit here and say, oh, no, this isn't crazy, but then this is crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk on a fog line here. All right. Let's say somebody uh, gender identifies as somebody else. Okay. You're a man. You think you're a woman. Mm -hmm. You're a woman. You think you're a man. Mm -hmm. As society, we're like, yo, that's cool. Right. Because they can operate and function in society as a normal person in work jobs and everything else. And the only thing that's different is that they think that they're a woman. Or right. They think that they're a man. You know what I'm saying? So society says, yo, we're not supposed to have an issue with this. All right. That not putting that into a category of mental illness enables this kind of crap to, to go on. And and what I mean by that is is like, yo, people yo, you're acting you're acting against the norm, you know what I'm saying? You, you, like let's say somebody woke up and said, "Yo, I wanted to I feel I'm a dog." That's I identify as a dog. You're going to lock them up in a loony bin. What is the difference at the end of the day? Really, what is the difference? So I feel like they need to do some serious, serious, serious adjustments to the medical journals or whatever they do that, that constitutes what is mental illness and what isn't mental illness. Because right now, there is too much lackadaisical feelings mm -hmm. on the fact that this guy was basically fostering children. Right. You know what I'm saying? For his own sexual purposes. You right. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, the parents had a lot to do with it, too. So, you know, shame on them, too. And all that, like, the cost of fame. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, people love R. Kelly. People love his music. People want their daughters. And I was about to say, fans. because his music spiked after yeah, this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to spike. Because, one, you got a whole generation of kids that are going right now, who the hell is R. Kelly? Right. Right. You better believe it. There's a bunch of people that were like, who's R. Kelly? And they got to go look. That's why it's, you know, and then other people were like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this song. And it brought so it back. Yeah. Now, as a producer, do you do you still, I mean, if someone came into your studio and they said to you, you know, Zoo, I would like to remake an R. Kelly song, in your conscious mind, could you do it? Um, Listen, I, I'm a weird guy, all right? <laughs> I'm a guy who still wanted Kevin Spacey to be in House of Cards. Oh, God. <laughs> like, it's like this, man. People are going to be who they are personally. Mm -hmm. What you do in terms of your art and your, and your gift to the world, like, listen, that has nothing to do with the other, in my opinion. All okay. right? I'm not going to not listen to R. Kelly's music 
because he is who he, I'm not I'm not listening to Michael Jackson's music because somebody might say this. Now, with, am I going to give him a pound when I see him? Probably not cuz that's creepy mm -hmm. and it's just like, you know what, dude, you you know what I mean, but like, yo, you made some good music and nobody can ever take that away from you. Like, you know what I mean? Like you did this, but then also you did this. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I don't mess with you on this level with this, but your music is still good. Timeless. You know what I mean? And it's still timeless. You know what I'm saying? Like House of Cards was still a show that could have been, you know what I mean? Like, and then like, yo, okay, then he doesn't have to act anymore. You know what I mean? But like you built this beautiful like piece of art mm -hmm. and now the whole art is ruined because you as a person brought it down. Like, I just can't stand that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, um, there should be a separation between art and the person who creates it because at the end of the day, to be an artist means that you're going to be a little crazy. You're going to have something wrong with you. Right. At some level, there's not a single artist that doesn't have some kind of mental dis disorder. So, like, I'm not saying that, like, you know what I'm saying, what R. Kelly did was right, but I'm also saying at the same time, like, yo, the man needs help. Mm -hmm. And, like, people need to, like, address that. And, and step like, in. And, and step in and man. be like, yo, like, bro, like, you need to go to counseling, my man. Like, you need to go in a facility somewhere and like sit and talk with somebody and really get to the root of these issues because that's what's causing this and like clearly something happened to him as a child or Absolute, something. right you know what i mean like it's something there's something there's a reason why he is the way that he is and like people just want to just chalk it up to oh no he's just crazy he's just that's just what he is you now know let I mean? me ask you this question zoo because we talk about mental health so have you ever and you don't have to say any names but have mm -hmm. you ever been in, in a studio session where you felt that someone was going through mental issue mental health issues where you had to actually stop this session and help them out not like that not like that, you know what I'm saying, where somebody might have had like a mental health episode or something in the studio, like, nothing like that. No. Okay. No, but there's been people in the studio that clearly, like, you might be bipolar, you might, you know what I'm saying, uh, schizo, yeah, whatever, you whatever. Know what I mean? like, you got, everybody's got something. Right, right. You know what I'm saying, I got anger management issues, you know what I'm saying, like, everybody has something, you know, and it all stems from something from your childhood or something that you went through as a kid, so like. I just feel like the R. Kelly situation is that. I feel like people that my gender identify might be something with, with their childhood or something that, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a psychiatrist. You know, clearly they've done plenty of medical research on this. So if they haven't found a link to any of that, then they haven't found a link. Like, but I always think there's always something. There's you know, always something. There's always something, you know what I mean? Like, you just have to find it. Zoo the producer, Zoo the engineer, Zoo the artist developer, Zoo the supporter, Zoo the friend. Where is Zoo in the relationship? What is going on oh in your God. relationship? Where is the woman that I remember if I was nosy like I was nosy? No. You were in a relationship. We have seen a couple posts and then it disappeared. Talk to us. The, the ladies want to know. Because every time you're in the club and I see you, some female is taking you off somewhere in your ear. What? No. It's... <laughs> Listen. All right. First of all, you know, us bays niggas, we coming back. All right. <laughs> Coming back full force. Shout out to my shout out to the Beige Brotherhood, Baby Rex. Shout uh -huh. out to Baby Rex, future leader of the of the Beige Brotherhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like Rex George, my man's. Um, shout out to Oi. Also, Mike Mike Evans project also coming out. One of my longtime artists that I've worked with since I was in Brooklyn. He's also got a project coming out. I almost forgot about that as well. I don't want to forget nobody. Um, I was in a relationship for like six years. Woo! Six years? Yeah, I was in a relationship for like six years. It all started when I was living in Brooklyn. I moved up here. She was from up here. We went to high school together and everything, but I didn't really know her in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of went separate ways. We're still we're still close. We're friends, you know what I mean? But like, this industry, this industry takes a big toll mm -hmm. on, on the relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see my parents a lot. I don't see my family a lot. Some of my closest friends I don't get to see often. That's right. My music family is like really my, my become family. my family mm -hmm. in terms of like who I see on a regular basis and stuff. So um, it just didn't mesh, you know. It just you know it ran its course, and you know she wanted to go one way, I wanted to go another way. Um, so we just mutually decided to you know separate. go our separate ways. So I spent the last year and a half being single. What have you learned in this single year? Um, How about yourself? About myself, um, ain't nobody got it like the zoo. Oh! You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, 
know. We don't know. No. Tell us. We need to know. Um, nah, I just, yeah, I got a lot of self-confidence. Uh -huh. um, you know what I mean? Um, I got to explore. I, you know, I was, you know, locked up for a while. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm going to say, like, locked up like it was a bad thing. You know, there was a lot of positives in the relationship and everything like that. Um, but, I don't know. I got to be single for the first time in a while. Um, the entire time that I was with my, my ex, I didn't cheat once. You know what I mean? Honestly, so, beige brothers don't cheat? I'm not going to say that. That's an absolute. That's an absolute right there. Can't say all beige brothers don't cheat. But this beige brother don't cheat. I don't cheat. If I'm in a committed relationship, I'm not going to cheat. Very good. Um, Very good. Um, but it has to be solidified and official. You know what I mean? So, currently, right now, I have been talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, she's from Brooklyn. She sings. Um, she's somebody I knew from my past, and she's been holding it down and really showing me what it takes, what a woman that really gets the industry, you know what I mean, and like what it takes to be with somebody who's in the industry, like like women that have a tendency to kind of really be territorial mm -hmm. and jealous, and you know, and being that I'm in the industry, there's going to be rappers in the studio with chicks right. in the studio, you right. know what I mean, like, uh, I'm going to be constantly drawing attention to myself through social media and stuff like that, which, you know, when you out there like that, people are going to get in your DMs. Absolutely. And, you know what I mean? And you either have the maturity to, to deal with that or you don't have the maturity. And I feel like a lot of men just really aren't mature enough to handle relationships. So they'll get in one and then they'll end up cheating mm -hmm. when in reality they should probably just stay single for a little while longer and get that out of the system, you know, for however long it takes. Some men never get it out of the system. You know what it is. But it, it um, for me personally, I once I'm committed, that's it. So and I, shout out to your parents because you had that your parents to 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 get to glean off of, correct? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, they raised me, so like all my morals and stuff, mm -hmm. and my principles, you know, stem from that, you mm -hmm. know. But also at the same time, it's just it's just how I look at things, you know. Now, why I mean? you like, didn't get an everyday girl? Why didn't you? Why did you specifically decide to deal with somebody in the industry? And is it harder? It's to not that I dealt with somebody in the industry. It's that she just happens to sing. It's just oh, okay. You know, she okay. Just happens to did sing. you find it easier though dealing with her because she's in rather than dealing with someone out? It's, no, it's her personality. It's just okay. It's just it, it, it's it's like a lot of people like force relationships. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they force relationships upon people um, or upon themselves. Everybody thinks that because you have sexual chemistry and that you're friends, mm -hmm. you know, you guys can hold a conversation that you should be in a relationship. And it's just like, no, there's got to be a whole lot more to that. You have to look at their life. You have to look at what's going on in your life. You have to look at their family. Can right. you get along with their family? Like a lot of things. So I put, I people go through, you're going to be in a relationship with me. You go through an excruciating, strenuous trial test period. Oh, not like I'm like testing, but like in the sense of where like, all right, I got to make sure certain things are in order mm -hmm. if I'm going to make this commitment. Because once I make that commitment, I made that commitment. You right. know what I mean? There's no, I don't do that whole, I'm just going to be your, your boyfriend just for like. You know, just six, for the looks and the pose. Yeah, just like, for six months, you know what I'm saying? Just to have a boyfriend, you know what I mean? Just to be a boyfriend. I don't do that temporarily. You want to have. Yeah, you it's either I'm single you. and we're doing like whatever or. I'm in a relationship with you, you know what I mean, and, and, and we're and we're building together. So like I was doing that, and um, it didn't work out. And then I spent some time single, played the field, you know what I'm saying, and then ended up getting reconnected with this person. And you know, um, nothing's like crazy affiliate, like Facebook official, right, you know, right, you know, right. Publicly posting all this stuff right. all the time. But y'all know what it is. But we know what it is. We know, that, you know, what I'm saying that we both got each other's backs and that we mesh very, very well together. So. Like, Shout out to I'm you. just seeing where it goes, really. Um, and I never like try to like jump the gun and say, yeah, this is what I mean. You know, I like to just feel everything out, make sure yeah, it's right. You know what I mean? Because so. you, 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 another person going somewhere. Shout out to you, Zoo. Uh, I gotta say this publicly. I, I told my mom when she came in, I had to fight Zoo to get on the show with me. Because uh, the last time I did this interview was at his house, and he was more free. So he's more confined right now. So I had to fight, beg, and plea, and reschedule well, eight same, times to get the man well, here. At the same time, like, even if you would have had me on the show back then, I, I built a lot more in the past year. That's and a half fact. Then you know, I have more to talk about today than I would have had to talk about two years ago 
et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this question, too, before we get out of here. I want you to do two things for me. First and foremost, mm -hmm. if you had to give um, any artist that, that really, really wants to get on, they really take their craft seriously, what would, advice would you give them? Take it serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's... it's like, look, get people around you that aren't in competition with you, mm -hmm. that know what time it is, okay. that are willing to find roles mm -hmm. on your team. Mm -hmm. um, what I've yet to see is a group of five friends where you got one kid who's incredibly talented mm -hmm. and his five friends are pitching together to help pay for his studio time, including himself. Right. And they're trying to like move this wagon along. All I see is cats that come to the studio, like, shout out Dizzy Banco. All we see is cats that come out to the studio just so that they can get an IG pick or whatever. You guys are out here fake supporting. Yes. You guys need to really support. If I you were really supporting, I how come how come I don't see y'all helping your man hand me the bread at the end of the session? How come I don't see that? People want to see like you know what I'm saying? That's a true team. Let's talk about That's it. That's a true team right there. That's right. I don't see that happening. You guys need to do that. And you guys, like, you see that little thing that you see on, on Facebook whenever you put a post, you see that, sh that thing that says boost, boost mm -hmm. post, and you pay $20, $30, do that. But it actually name, helps. Right, right. It actually helps. Do that. Promote your, promote your craft. Don't just make a song, drop it on SoundCloud immediately. Like, create some awareness for it. Mm -hmm. Then drop it. You know what I'm saying? And then continuously just keep on working hard and just trying to get better and identify and what your weaknesses are. And identify what your strengths are, and double down on the strengths, and lose the weaknesses, man. Shut. That's the, that's the great advice. Let me ask you this: What would you say to people? Uh, first of all, is the retreat taking new clients? Retreat is always taking new clients. What would you say? I don't have enough clients. You don't have enough. I don't have enough clients. I want ten hours of studio time booked a day. With that being said, what do you say to artists that are artists that are looking for studio time, and they may say, "Oh, the zoo is unapproachable, or maybe it's too expensive, or maybe he only works for I'll a certain kind of I'll say this: I'm one of the worst people with my phone. Um, people that know me will attest to that. Like, you call me, you text me, it's. I'm responding when I feel like it. And it's not against you or anything else. It's just I got so much stuff mm -hmm. going on that sometimes I'm not in the mood to have that conversation. I might not see it because I'm doing something else. You know what I mean? So I always get back to people when I can. But just reach out, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, on social media or whatever. I'm always down to accept new clients. Just be willing to pay the price, though, that that, that comes with the retreat. Right? No negotiation. We're up to $50 an hour now, up from 40 from last year. We just upgraded the whole studio, new mic, new console, new speakers. You know what I'm saying? We now can do mastering. We weren't able to do that before, but we could, but we weren't going to say that we could without doing it for real, for real. Um, a lot of fake mastering going on at these local studios. Stop that. Please stop. Like, artists, I'm going to say this right now. Say it. Yo, if a studio is like, if they don't got certain things, I'm not going to say what those certain things are so my competition will have to go out and get these. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bad. But if they don't got certain things mm -hmm. to do mastering and they're offering you $50 to master, they're, they're, they're getting you for your money every single time you spend that $50. Because you can actually take that same $50 and send your record to an actual mastering house or mastering engineer who got all the crazy gadgets and speakers and, and, and maximizers and compressors and EQs and all that kind of good stuff and, and get you an authentic master. So please, artists, don't fall into that trap. And sorry, engineers, if I just messed your bag up, but... I'm trying to, to do it to, the right to, way. I'm, I'm trying to make this industry as more honest than, than than it has been in recent years. So, um, yeah, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Shout out to you, Zoo. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show and just Thank edu you for having me. educating us with a lot of things that you said tonight. I'm sure I didn't know, and a lot of people that's tuning in and gonna tune I in later. Said, I, said, I know I'm gonna watch this later. And be like, man, I said this crazy crap. Listen. I am not anti LGBT or none of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but we come I wasn't. I don't want people to misconstrue what I was talking about before. Uh huh. Like I, not at all. That, that community strong. I got cousins and nephews. You know what I'm saying? All types of people in my family and stuff. I, I mess with all types of people, all walks of life. Um, I was just basically making a comparison that, yo, 
people got mental health issues and we really, and it's real and it's real and we you laugh I mean? about it we, we put, yeah, brush it under there I mean? and it's just like you know I, it's just it is what it is man well, sh shout out to you, Zoo. Uh, I thank you for coming to finally sit yeah. with me in my house. I've been in your house many, many times. Yeah. If you guys never visited the retreat or been there, you are missing a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And when I tell you the studio section is authentic, you don't have to go to New York City. You don't have to go down south. You don't even have to go to L.A. You don't have, you don't have to do none of that. Everything you need is right here, especially studio-wise. You guys got to visit the retreat. He has everything and anything you need. Plus, you might go there and get a good meal every once in a while, uh, some good entertainment. It's a lot of stuff that goes on in the retreat. So shout out to Phil. Shout out to the yeah, zoo. Yeah, yo, honestly, yo, shout out to my main man, Phil. Yo, without my partner, Phil, yo, I wouldn't really be able to do none of this. Um, I'm really like, he don't like to be out and like, you know what I'm saying, cameras and all that stuff. So I come out here and I'll do all this kind of stuff and everything like that. But um, he really be holding it down. Yes. And he's worked with tons and tons and tons of great talent. He got to work with Chris Brown. He got to work with Wyclef. He got to work with Just Blaze, Travis Scott. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Like tons of ludicrous. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's worked with a lot of tons of people. And without his knowledge that he brought, from, from from working underneath Ariel Bourjo. Shout out to Ariel Bourjo, mm -hmm. um, Grammy winning engineer. Um, without working up from his tutelage and everything and bringing that knowledge into the retreat, like we really wouldn't have the sound that we have today. Um, you know what I'm saying? So credit him. That's that, a fact. You know we pay I mean? homage to Phil. That's a fact. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like shout out to my whole team. Shout out to Swift. Shout out to Tony. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Greg. Shout out to Diari. Diari back in the mix. Yes, we miss him. Diari's, Diari's got a cooking show that's about to start off. He just filmed one of the episodes yes. in my kitchen uh, yesterday. And it's some good food. Yeah, he, so shout out to Diari. Um, Dope Coley, mm -hmm. my main man right there. Mm -hmm. Yo, shout out to Dope Coley, always holding us down. Shout out to all my artists at the retreat. Mm -hmm. You guys make it what it is today. Um, you know, and uh, and I'm sure the people yeah. want to thank you, Zoo. Yeah. We thank you for being authentic and trying to be and, and being as honest uh, of, of a businessman as you can be. Yeah, um, you're to be. Try very to be. honorable. And uh, thank you for your thoughts for Zoo, because not for nothing, I feel like you should do something with them because you definitely. I watched your. I watched them all last year. You definitely got something going on. Yeah, no, nah, this Zoo. year's been a good year for, so far for the thoughts by Zoo. I, I, I I'll go through and I like. Check, search the hashtag and like check the responses on it. I see like someone gets six likes. I'm like, oh, I'll delete that one out. You know what I mean? But then, but this time, the last, uh, every single one I posted in 2019 has gotten over 40 likes. Yes. So like people have been, I guess, jiving with what I've had to say for 2019. You know, I don't really give a lot of credit and all that kind of stuff to likes or whatever, but like, you know, people are using that as a measurable statistic. So, and even if they don't like, they comment because yeah. you have a, always have a lot of comments. Yeah, yeah. People like to engage and, and, and I like to ruffle the pot, like you know what I'm saying. But primarily, I'm just literally this is what happens. I wake up in the morning, and I wake up late. I I run an engineer schedule, so I my my sleep schedule is 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. So mm -hmm. I'll wake up my and I'll do my morning business in the bathroom. And while I'm in there in the bathroom, <laughs> I'm scrolling my feed. And I'm like seeing what people are talking about, uh -huh. people are sharing, and then I'll just instantly say, I'm like, all right, first annoyance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a thought. So a lot of times I get a thought or whatever, um, and uh, and it just, you know. It spiral from there. Yeah, it'll definitely... spiral from there, but what people don't realize is that you know, every single time I usually post, I turn off the notifications to it, and I just let people kind of just go off on it, and then I'm just, you're enjoying my life dude. right right like, so we think you're not really even like... yeah i'm not even paying attention to what <laughs> even the fallout is for the post and then i'll come by and i'll check it later you know what i mean like I, like and i'll see like all right what are people talking about and then i'll just laugh right because they think they really get into you and you yeah. don't have your whole not, day well not even i'm not even posting things where and that will cause people to really necessarily get at me it's like i'll cause general discussions and there's people getting at each other that's true you know what i mean like the only time that i'll say something where people can really get at me is like I mean, I'll address this right here on the show. I'm surprised you didn't even ask me about it. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Cats were, you know, throwing shade at one of my artists on Facebook. And, like, right now, like, you know what I'm saying? A homie's, like, been trying to get my attention to have a conversation about it and everything like that. But it's just like, yo, like, people just really don't have anything positive to say these days. And it's just like, yo, we got to spread some more positivity and support. If you really are cool with somebody and you really, like, you know, jive with their movement and what they're doing, then, you know what I'm saying, save the negative talk. If you got some kind of constructive criticism, 
That's yeah, different. Hit me up directly. You know right. what I'm saying? You know, you know, and I guess they didn't even realize that I was even gonna have an issue with it. But it's just like at this point, I'm not really playing any games 2019, and it's like I'm gonna address fakeness. And Thank it's just you. like, and to me, if you know that I helped work on this project or I did work on this, and you're gonna belittle it or you're gonna talk smack about it, but at the same time be somebody who wants to call me friend or cool or ask me for help when they need it and stuff like that, you got another thing coming. Talk to them. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't jive that way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll be biased and, and neutral for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it just gets to a point. It's just like, all right, man, you, you bugging now. Right, you, like, out, you out of pocket. Yeah, you bugging now. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I'll go off. Like, I, I'm, I'm known for going on Facebook and, and, and setting the tone and calling people out. That's a fact. Lacing people. I didn't publicly call them out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to publicly call them out. They're going to watch this and they're going to know who I'm talking about because they keep on posting my photos on Instagram over and over and over and over, and over again trying to get my attention. Yeesh. <laughs> but, it's just like, but even then, like, you know, it's like, like the, the comment that made me mad and it, it made me mad on two counts. It was, they called one of my artists Captain for, for create, for having, cars in the video. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I'm bringing this even up on the show is because this needs to be addressed. Talk about it. Um, it is not capping for an artist to rent and use their own bread and money that is hard earned mm -hmm. to rent a luxury car to have in their video. Because the process of even going through that and getting the car is scrupulous. You have to have the money, you have to have the credit, you know what I'm saying? And you have to, it, 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 you know what I mean? Like to, to make that happen is is the opposite of capping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's the opposite of capping. So it's like, so I really, really took offense to it because it's like I was there during the video shoot. I saw what my man's did to finance all of this. Right. You know, and the hard work. Like we almost got arrested shooting the video. We're shutting down traffic illegally, doing all types of crazy stuff out in LA, shooting two videos. You know what I'm saying? Like. And somebody gonna try to say it's your cap and like, all right, well, just so you know, no artist, even a hip hop artist that has millions and millions of dollars, is using their own car in their video. They don't use their own jewels, their own clothes, nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, see, like sometimes they might use their own jewels and stuff like you think that. So? Yeah, because that might be signature to the style. You know what I'm saying? That one particular chain that got the name on it or whatever. But like, um, everybody, everything else is all you know. You got a stylist. You know right. what I'm saying? That's coming in and helping you with that. So. Like, you're gonna call this artist Captain, then you better call Jay Z Captain, you better mm -hmm. call Kanye West Captain, right? You know what I mean? Like, because all them cats had rented cars and stuff like that in the video, you know what I'm saying? Like, this this dude, Kanye West, shot a video bound too, where he had a green screen, motorcycles, not even really driving, and the wind blowing the wrong way. Like, whether or not he did that on purpose or not, whatever. But, like, you know, you can create judgments about everything, you absolutely. Know what I mean? Like, so. Absolutely. I just kind of took offense to that because, you know what I'm saying, I was out there, I saw what, saw what it was, and I, and I don't really believe that anybody can call somebody capping if they actually put up hard-earned dollars to do it, especially if you don't got the funds yourself. I was about this, yes. To even, to even do such a move, you know what I mean? And then I'm at the show, and I see cats that were, you know what I'm saying, kind of saying the same shit. Uh-huh. Dancing to my capping ass rapper. Right, right. <laughs> Ain't that the irony? <laughs> yeah, really funny. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You gotta watch out. Everybody's clout chasing out here. Um, listen, before we get out of thing, here, that's the last thing I'm gonna. We try. gotta talk about that. We, and listen, I'm trying to get out of here, but this is thoughts by Zoo. We gotta hit it. What is the difference between clout chasing and support? Because right. I be supporting, and people say, right, "This is I'm the clout difference. Chasing. This is the difference." All right. Let's say it's a it's a it, it, it's somebody like it's somebody's birthday, right? Mm -hmm. This is the clout chase. Do you post a photo of them or a photo of you with them? You post a photo of them, but the clout chasing is you and them. Yeah. Okay. Because it's because you're making it about you. Okay. It's making about you. You want to show everybody that you know this person. Mm -hmm. You want to show everybody how close you are to this person. You know what I'm saying? When it's somebody's birthday, I never go on Facebook and go and post happy birthday on their on their newsfeed. One, that's insincere. Two, if I really mess with you, I got your phone number. I'm gonna hit you up directly and say happy birthday, either DM or whatever. And everybody that knows me can attest to that. They say, oh yeah, damn straight, Zoo hits me directly and says happy birthday. Yes, he does. So, um, cloud chasing is just that, man. It's basically you want 
you're you're doing this not for support but for your own come up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that is clout chasing when you want to be around because you think it can benefit you okay you know what i'm saying you want to support because you think it can benefit you by supporting that's clout chasing it's not authentic you know what i'm saying when when, when you know what i'm saying certain artists that you know what i'm saying get sort of accolades i don't go on facebook you know what I'm saying? I did it a couple of times because it was an exciting time, you know what I mean? But it wasn't cloud chasing at that point. And then, you know, I'm hitting people directly and like, yo, congratulations on gold record. You know right. what I mean? Like it ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, not that everybody that does that is what it is. Some of it is actual genuine support mm -hmm. because they know the person mm -hmm. genuinely. But if you don't actually know that person and stuff like that, it's just like, all right, man, like send it directly or just, you know, otherwise it just looks, it just looks bad in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like some people might think that I'm being a little bit too opinionated about it or something like That's that. a good question because let me but bring up an example. We can touch on it. I don't really like to see that. Like, Let's bring know. up an example. We can touch on it. Yeah. Um, as far as Cardi said, Fontaine. Okay. A lot of people may have not have believed in him. So a lot of people wasn't with him shooting in the gym. All right. He in the gym and he made a, he, 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 get the, he got the rings now, big rings. Maybe they didn't believe in him then, but they see it because he did it in front of our face. So now they're jumping on and saying we support him, they're sharing. Is that, that cloud chasing? That's d it, it, it depends on, on the form and how it's happening. Okay. Now, listen, he's inspired an entire community to get behind him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of that is genuine support. People are just genuinely yes. happy to know that somebody from Newburgh made it. Right. All that is not cloud chasing. The cloud chasing is when you see it have inward implications. Okay. The caption will give it all away. You know what I'm saying? A lot of me, I, you know what I'm saying, being used in the verbiage and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing like, like, this is the difference, right? Somebody, like, let's say you get a gold, uh, con congrats the party on his gold record. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cloud Chase would be like, Congrats to the party. I always knew you'd do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Like like like, like I was like I remember when like you know what I mean? like they start throwing all that extra. St it's like yo man, just keep it to the point. Man. Right. Like, Congrats. Once you, start, once you start trying to put yourself in there, and start trying to make it inward about yourself, that's narcissism. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's narcissism. So like, there's a lot of that going around. Like people, there's if there's anything talking about mental health, narcissism is an epidemic. Right. And people don't even realize they're a narcissist. Like and you can spot one because they make everything about themselves. Right. You know what I mean. So, um, that's the difference between cloud chasing and that. Like you know what I'm saying. But Carson, like, he inspired the entire community. So people rallying around him and stuff. That's not cloud chasing. But like, come on, chill out. Right. Like you know what I mean. Like chill out a little bit. Like and, and that's what I'm talking about. You know. You know what, Zoo? You you the one. You the one. Thank you so much for taking your time to come all the way from the tree because I already know you got some studio sessions booked up, ready to go. So I'm going to let you go. So before we get out of here, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah. Make your shout outs. Tell people your studio hours, where your studio is, a contact number, and do what you want right. on your social media. Um, you can reach me at IG, Zoo the Producer. Um, I'm not going to give my phone number. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but you can hit me on Instagram, Zoo the Producer, or on Facebook, Zoo Ben Ramnani. Um, it's easy. Just hit me on the IG. Um... Studio hours, we're open 24 hours a day. If you want time at a certain hour, we can do it. We'll do it, you know, uh, we're 50 an hour, um, which is like, listen, you come to my studio, our studio, and it's a New York City mm -hmm. vibe, you know what I mean? And you don't gotta pay $20 in tolls, $20 in gas, and $60 an hour to record here. Mm -hmm. So look at the value in that. Right, 50 an hour, that's, that's chunk change. Eight hours, we bring it down to 40. Um, we got in-house producers. Everybody that, that, that messes around with the, at the retreat, they all make heat. Dizzy Banco, out here catching Meek Mill, uh, Lil Wayne, Neek Bucks, all types of placements. You know what I'm saying? Rich Morris, out here, I can't even speak on what he's working on right now, but he's doing big things. Loso, Swiffer, myself, Phil, we got tons of people making beats, so you don't got to go to YouTube for that. You know what I'm saying? You got tons and tons and tons of talented individuals. Not only that, but you also get a hub and connection into networking with other talented artists that are doing exactly what you're trying to do and doing it successfully. That's right. So it rubs off on you. Talent rubs off. That's the point. You hear about Treehouse in Atlanta. What's the number one thing that people say about Treehouse in Atlanta? Oh, you can walk out of your session and there'll be another cat 
doing another session right in the next room and you be vibing the next thing you know you're on a song with them that's how it goes down at the retreat cats just end up making songs together they don't even know how it happens mm. we got a song yo cody got a fire single that he's gonna put out before i don't know if it's gonna come out before pink heroin too but he's got this fire single called white fur he's got Banco dupree jig nice tony and himself all on this record together oh, yeah, you know what i'm saying enough. how this record even came together cody just pulled up to the studio during one of somebody's session, I forgot whose session it was, and it just ended up coming together. Like, this is, it's a beautiful thing, man. And like, people just, yo, come be a part of this. You know what I mean? Like, hit me up, come book some time, come be a part of this. It's a family affair. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So projects, uh, Pink Heron with two, Dope Coley. Life Lava, Life Catches Up. The Untitled Tony E and Dizzy Banco Project. Uh. Mike Evans project, uh, Lake Mary, that's, that's called the Lake Mary EP. Uh, Ease the Rappers project, 94 Jew, mm. Top Dog, now out right now. That's a fire project. That, um, go check that out um, that we worked on. Uh, Jig Nice just dropped the project not too long ago and just put out like three videos for it. Yes, fire, it killing it. Um, Banco about to drop um, a bunch, a bunch of music soon. Um, yeah, I, I can't even think right now who else is, is, is working on stuff. Flossy. Flossy's about to drop some 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 heat. Um, yeah, man. And then uh, oh yeah, and shout out to my artist Poison in the Bronx, man. She, yo, Poison, she's doing she's doing really, really dope, dope music as well, man. Go Poison. And, uh, she's actually in Queens and Brooklyn. But um but shout out to Poison as well. I got a single with her, Unemotional Freak, that's out on Spotify right now. Um, that's a fire record, and the whole EP is fire. Um, go check that out right now. And, um, yeah, that's it, man. We're just chilling. Well, shout yeah. out to you, Zoo. Listen, shout out to Zoo and Phil and the whole retreat, um, the retreat club studio um, team. Thank you guys for allowing Zoo to come. Let me borrow Zoo for an hour, him to come sit with us, to educate us, and give us an insight of, of what's going on in a retreat and around the Hudson Valley. And oh. best. Wait, shout out also to Galaxy, my, my, my brothers over at Galaxy Records too, uh, Swanko, Dave, Swanko. DJ Neptune, yo, DJ Neptune, I just Woo! want to give a special shout out to DJ Neptune, Sorry. yo, this cat is something else with the DJ, man, yes. and he just dropped a new song, Different, it's a fire record, go check that out. That's the one He's, with him and the cops and the police. Yeah, yes. he got yeah, mm -hmm. when he got he got he got in trouble with the with the cops filming it, you know what I'm saying? That's how you know. When it's a hot video, we get in trouble with the cops. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so shout out to them. They put together a really, really dope, intricate video. Very, very the video whole video is different to go along with the with the words. So shout out to those guys doing the Sage English, killing it on the mm -hmm. videos. And make sure, yo, you guys hit up my man Swiffer for the videos, cause he gets it in and um Yo, visuals are a very, very important part of this whole process, so everybody needs to make sure they put effort in it and uh, money into the videos. So if you guys need videos, holler at my man Swiffer for the videos. Um, but that's it, man. Well, listen, <laughs> it's Monday. I hope you're informed. Be better, do better, but be most importantly, hashtag get involved. Make sure you guys follow the retreat for any upcoming projects. Hit up the zoo. Um, Zoo the producer on EIG. Get your book your studio time today. Don't be cheap. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Go get you some quality music at the retreat. This is your girl, Miss Moochie, Miss 845 Important Life, 845 Straight 845 Radio, building our own from the ground up. I'll see you guys tomorrow.